Hi everyone, this is Irfan. So now we are going to discuss about refraction of light. What is refraction? When we observe this phenomenon, so let us try to understand about this quality of light. See, the light travels from one medium to another medium. What is the speed of light in vacuum? So, the speed of light in vacuum is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. That means around 3 lakhs kilometers per second. With this much of speed, the light travels in vacuum. When it travels from one medium to another medium, what happens? When the medium changes, the speed of light changes. That's why the light bends. That means it changes its direction. This quality of light is called as refraction. Let us try to understand this quality with some examples. So here I have a pen. Now I am going to put this pen into this glass of water. What happens? Observe carefully. You can observe the difference in the pen which is inside the water and which is outside the water. See, the part of pen which is inside the water, it is looking bigger than its original size. And also at the interface, that means where water and air meets, at the interface the, pens, the pen looks like it has bent. Is the pen originally bent? See. The pen is not bent, it is straight in direction. When I put this pen into the water, it looks like it has bent. This quality of light is called as refraction. Why this is happening? Because the speed of light is changing. Here we have air and here we have water. That means two different mediums. When the light is traveling from air to water that means two different mediums so it looks like the light ray bends this quality is called as refraction let us take one more example here i have a lemon observe the size of the lemon now what happens when this lemon is placed inside the water so into this glass of water, now I am going to put this lemon. Observe the size of the lemon now. So it is looking bigger than its original size. Why is this happening? This is also because of refraction. Now in this class, we are going to discuss why this is happening. Why some objects are looking bigger than their original size. Why the light ray bends. So these are the topics now we are going to discuss in this class. See, just before we have discussed that when light travels from one medium to another medium, it changes its direction. That means it bends because the speed of light changes. How the speed of light changes? How to find this quality? Now let us discuss. First of all, let us take this case. That means when light ray is traveling from air to glass. So two different mediums we have. So in this case, the light ray is traveling from air and it is entering into the glass. What happens? Before going to that, let us try to know few basic concepts of this topic. So this light ray which is traveling, this light ray is called as incident ray. So the light ray which is passing into the another medium is called as incident ray. And the light ray which is travel into the another medium, this light ray 
this light ray is called as a refracted ray. Now, if we observe carefully, the angle between the incident ray and this line, this line N, N dash, this line, this perpendicular line is called as normal line. So, the angle between the incident ray and the normal line is called as angle of incidence. It is denoted by small i. And here, the angle between refracted ray and the normal line is called as angle of refraction. It is denoted by small r. How these two values are? Now we are going to discuss. Let us take the first case. That means when light ray is traveling from A to glass. So in this case, the light ray is traveling from A to glass. So this A is called as a rarer medium. And this glass is called as a denser medium. That means when a light ray is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium, what happens? How the light ray affects? So if you observe this diagram carefully, when the light ray is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium, the angle of incidence is greater than angle of refraction. That means the refracted ray, the refracted ray bends towards the normal line. When a light ray passing from rarer medium to denser medium, it bends towards the normal line. That's why the angle of refraction decreases than the angle of incidence. So in this case, the angle of incidence is always greater than angle of refraction. Let us take another case. That means, when light ray traveling from denser medium to rarer medium. That means, when a light ray is passing from glass to A. In this case, how it changes? Let us try to discuss. So, this is the incident ray. This is the incident ray. That means, the light ray is passing from glass to the A. That means, from denser medium to the rarer medium. So this is angle of incidence and this is angle of refraction. The angle between normal line and incident ray is called as angle of incidence and the angle between normal line and refracted ray is called as angle of refraction. So here in this case how these two are, if you observe this diagram carefully you can easily find out that the angle of incidence is less than angle of refraction. That means when a light ray passing from denser medium to the rarer medium, it bends away from the normal line. It bends away from the normal line. That's why the angle of refraction is always greater than the angle of incidence in this case. So, so angle I is less than angle R. So this is the relation between angle of incidence and angle of refraction in this case. And now, how to find the speed of light and how to compare the speeds of light or how to compare the materials. To understand this, we need to find out, we need to understand another concept that is refractive index. So, what is refractive index and uh, how it is useful for us? So the refractive index, it is denoted by small n. What is refractive index? So the refractive index is the, this is also called as absolute refractive index. The absolute refractive index is defined as the ratio between the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in a medium. So speed of light in vacuum is denoted by C. Speed of light in a medium is denoted by V. Then we can write the formula for the refractive index that is absolute refractive index N is equals to C by V. So this is the formula to find the refractive index of a medium. So speed of light in vacuum, its units are meters per second. Speed of light in a medium, its units also 
meters per second. So these two will get cancelled. So that's why we can get one. That means the refractive index has no units. There are no units for refractive index. It is a constant value. And how this refractive index helps us to understand the nature of a material. So as the refractive index of a material increases, the speed of light decreases. That means the material which has very less refractive index, the speed of light is very high in that material. If the material has very high refractive index, the speed of light is very less in it. For example, if you take air, the refractive index of air is 1.0003. That means almost equal to 1. That's why the speed of light in air is almost equal to the speed of light in vacuum approximately equals to 3 to 10 to the power of 8. If you want to say exactly, the speed of light in air is 2.97 into 10 to the power of 8. That means almost equals to 3 to 10 to the power of 8. If we take diamond, the refractive index of the diamond is 2.42. So the refractive index of a diamond is 2.42. That means it is 2.42 times to the refractive index of air. That's why the speed of light in diamond is very less. The light travels very slowly in a diamond. That means the speed of light depends on the value of refractive index. So by knowing the refractive index value, we can easily find out the speed of light. That means how it travels in that medium. So these are the concepts. Basically, we need to understand in the case of refraction.